Good morning, good morning, GMG. Wednesday, January 24, 4, 2024. Look at that. Another beautiful day to have a beautiful day. I got both my co hosts fully back in the house. Yes, I only had one of them. One of them was exercised overnight was taken away from us, but he is so back. OSF, Mando, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> doing awesome, man. How are you? I'm great. You're good. God damn. I come I, I feel like I didn't have enough energy on the show prior to like going to work out every day now at seven. I feel like now it's like even more. You know? Uh it feels good. <sighs> okay, Griffin, we know you did it. Uh anyways, so <laughs> whoa Look, it looks like yesterday, it, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? I want that. Um, um, so, I mean, I mean, we may as well just discuss this right away. Ovi's back. So I, I, I know, yes, the topic to the show was, is OSF okay? I want to assure everybody that, you know, since we started with this yesterday, might as well stay, uh, start with this today. OSF is back. This is the real OSF. Funny enough, you being possessed and leaving us coincidentally Dieted. Is that a word? Coincided? With. No. <laughs> no. That's what? not a word. Guess, no. guess what? Guess what? Coincided, I think you're looking for. Coincided. 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 Yeah, that's that's, that's a, word. a word, right? Okay, cool. Get, well, you know what? I get to make up my own words. Um, coincided with um, with um, Ovi shaving his beard. So he was fully gone. Right. Like, right? True. True. Yeah, maybe that's the beard true. is the source that's of all true. the bullishness. But see now, see now, now he's got a little bit of a like some it's coming back right now. I mean, this is a nice this is the look. And it's starting to come back like a little bit. And he yeah. seems to have been exercising back. I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe um maybe you are the one that is pregnant, Ovi. And uh, a lot have, of people a lot of people have said that to me to just today. Multiple people have said that, asked me that because I have got this like weird phase now where I'm just like, eating loads of like chocolate and like sweet stuff mm -hmm. and I've never really ever done that in my life but for the last two months since the fight i've just been on this like sugar binge basically and you've been pregnant um, for two months now right uh four months i've been pregnant for four months so it's, it, yeah. it, it coincides yeah part of the day with uh with your yeah your mango addiction your drinking thing like you like to drink sweets you like to eat sweets yeah. you, it's, you are eating a lot these days on the show at least um yeah this is, uh, yes. believe it or not this is mango uh mango cheese there's mango and ginger cheese Wednesdale. <laughs> who who finds that like who thinks yeah now i'm gonna go find some mango and ginger cheese mango cheese. hold on okay what does it taste like it describe it to me mango ginger cheese like because i know the taste of each individual thing but it's a bit of a weird one it's like have you ever had wensley wensleydale before it's a type of cheese um yeah, it's like it's kind of sweet, but then there's like this massive gingery aftertaste. I wouldn't, I'm not sure I'd recommend it, but um, yeah, it's good. I um, I um, yeah. I mean, look, I I'm, I'm not sure about that one, uh, but look, if you're, if you're happy for you, I guess uh, if you like it, I like it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that. It looks like you're man. Look at this guy. Like he's <laughs> we've reached like next levels. Like he's just he's enjoying. He's back again. He's back with us. He's back. I can, you know what? The look in your eyes, I know that look. I know you're back. Like, I can tell he's back. And the energy on the show is fully back. Like, when one of us is missing, it just doesn't feel right when the energy's off because we're three people, we're trifecta. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, and then, and now you're back. Love to see that. We're going to talk about your whiff trade in a minute. We're going to talk about everything. So, anything <laughs> today on the show, today, today, uh, as I, I, you know, I got to post the broadcasting. It was sent to us. Perfect. We are live on audio and video. And make sure you follow at Formal Hour because we are giving away a whole lot of money actually on the show. And we're about to give away a whole lot more money on the show. Let me tell you that. We got a lot of money to give you. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, today on the show, uh, today, today, market report updates and moves. Uh, as usual, as little, maybe short relief, bounce back here. I'd love to see that. So we'll talk about that. Uh, rewards are everywhere. Rewards, rewards everywhere. What, what's the meme? I forgot what the meme goes like, but Magic Eden, uh, Magic Eden um, uh, launched and announced and launched a Magic uh, 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 loyalty program, rewards program. So we'll see what that's all about. And also, I saw like Rabbi Wallet or something, like more points. So more points, more points uh, everywhere, more rewards all across the board. You absolutely love to see that. Uh, incentives all over the place. Um, great, good for us. NFT Roundup, as usual, um, you know, there is a, uh, 
you know, a lot of stuff moving on as usual. There's a three AC starry night, uh, one of one sale happening on Sotheby's at the moment. Looks like, you know, the, the auction houses are loving NFTs. Back to back sales nonstop. You have the RSIC airdrop just keeps on rising on the Ordinal side. Uh, on the Solano side, you know, there's obviously a bunch of stuff booming as usual. And on the ETH side as well. ETH side. Uh, <laughs> and also looks like Doom on Doge. Uh, playable version of Doom on Dogecoin. Wow. Love gaming. Dogecoin gaming. Look at that. So lots of stuff moving, lots of stuff happening. And I don't know if y'all saw that by now, but we're going to be pinning it. We're going to be retweeting. We're going to be sharing it. Uh, we are now partnered up with Robit uh, as a show partner. So basically twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, we are going to be playing Duel Arena or doing loot boxes or just like we're going to switch it up a bit and see how the vibe is on the show and like play it around uh, between us three and also picking different winner every time and just giving away a whole bunch of money to everybody because why not? <laughs> you know, uh, we're getting that robot money and we're going to give some of that robot money back to uh, our listeners. But first and foremost, to celebrate uh, this, uh, this partnership that we have with the fam over there. Which, by the way, I have been partnered with Rec Radio for over a year now. Obviously, you've seen Mando do some work with them on the Mando Minutes and whatnot. So it only made sense. We are giving away 15,000 United States dollars. Um, and we decided uh, to just give it to 15 individual people over 15 days. So 15 shows. So every single show, what we're going to do is and we're going to... Three weeks. This is going to be yeah. pretty wild. It's a wild. grand a grand a day for three weeks. A grand a day for three weeks. So it's basically all you have to do, right? And correct me if I'm wrong here, Sims, but it is pinned to the space is you have to retweet that post, follow at FOMO Hour and at Robicom, obviously. Um, and that's it. You have to be live on the show. We're not going to give it to you if you're not on the show. That's for sure. Because our goal is to like reward our audience. So you have to be on there and then we'll do a Twitter picker and uh, pick you. So look, if you're watching on, on, on video, I'm assuming that like you have to be on the Twitter space with your phone and you know, maybe, maybe some days we decide to switch things up and pick someone on video and stuff. But for now to not overcomplicate things, we'll pick someone that is live in the Twitter spaces audience. All you have to do again is follow us, make a robot account it takes two seconds. Cause we're just going to credit your account and send you a thousand dollars on there. And that's about it. So anyways, oh, our followers is just up only right now. We are about to breach ETH. I reckon this show, let's try and breach ETH this show. Let's get another 200. Are we flipping ETH on the show? So look, 2,100 followers. ETH is 2,232. Not a very hard thing to flip. So come on, y'all. We want to see those follows. We want to see those retweets. Uh, let's flip and, that coin. Uh, exactly. And let's flip that coin and let's fucking go. So without further ado, why don't we get this party started? And you know what? I am going to go to OV first as well. I feel like he needs to break down the market report from a bullish standpoint this time. Daily market report. Brought to you by Rug Radio. Joseph, what's the word? Uh, so trad markets are very strong, by the way. Like stocks just keep, 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 keep going higher. We're, we're up another zero per seven, zero point seven percent on the S and P five hundred. We're up another one point two five percent on the Nasdaq today. So we're we're hitting like new all time highs once again in the equities market. Um, we had a few days where interest rates blew out. They seem to have stabilized now, so that's good. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're you know we're getting very close to breaching 5k on the S&P 500, and uh, you know maybe at some point 18k on, on the Nasdaq as well. So stocks are very very strong. Um, crypto, we saw a good bounce overnight. Um, you know, Bitcoin's back above 40k. Uh, ETH seems to be the one that's struggling. ETH is uh, ETH Bitcoin is down. Sol ETH is up. Um, ETH is still at 2230, 2040. And, you know, I think it's what we said yesterday. Like, ETH had a big rally on um, the upcoming ETF narrative for it. And because um, people, you know, maybe the crypto people feel that the ETF narrative or the ETF result for Bitcoin has been a bit more mixed than, than anticipated. Like, we're actually, you know, Bitcoin is down from its high of 49K to 40K um, in that ETF period. Uh, maybe people, people are thinking that the effect on or impact on ETH may not be as positive as they had hoped. So um, ETH is struggling, but you know, Solana is back up to 87. A bunch of other altcoins are up quite a lot. Um, you know, Solana meme coins got crushed oh a day ago and, and they're back up again uh, today. Um, it seems like, you know, with, with the ETF stuff, with the Grayscale stuff, like today has been is potentially going to be the largest GBTC outflow again. I think yesterday was very close to the, to the, to the day before, but I saw earlier some, something like $700 million was transferred from grayscale to coinbase earlier today it does seem like most of that like supply is getting offset so far i think yesterday we did 
have an outflow, um, a larger outflow. And so the, the total net inflow created by um, ETS right now has is, has dropped to about 900 million from about 1.2 billion. So still keep an eye on that because, you know, it feels like we may be getting a net outflow now for a few more days to come as GBTC outflows accelerate. But the big question is like, when do they stop selling? And I just looking at some numbers online, like um, it seemed like the ETF guys, Bloomberg guys like James Safer and, uh, and Eric seem to think that um, the selling may, may subside once like 25% of GBTC is sold. I think there's... Are you guys going for a beer yet? Yeah. Are you and Eric? I would, I would love to have, I would love to go for beer with boys. Yeah, if they ever, if they, if you're, Eric you're again, really you're ever in London, him. please let me know. We're literally one step away from losing OV to Bloomberg. Yeah, like, yeah he's yeah. Re- the Rug Radio Network. He's retweeting me. I'm retweeting him. Wait, yeah, you're just a bit of, bit of... Your your internet is like is back in the Stone Age. Can you please like move already so we can get better Wi-Fi? Like, yeah, your Wi-Fi. You need to close down some tabs, I think. Yeah, this guy I has like even... seventeen. Tabs. How am I? How am I now? Am I better? Close down the one second and one minute whiff charts oh, no. and focus on the show. Is that, so does that explain it all? I like tabs. Is actually his alt. Oh, you think that's it? You oh, think that's no. Eric Alcunas, or you think that's uh, you think that's OSF? No, OSF's alt. I like tabs. Right. You know what I mean? He's keeping tabs on people. He's got his tabs open. He's got that one second whiff chart open right now. Like, for sure. Sure. I just closed all my charts. How, how am I now? Still terrible. How many, how many charts was that? I'm curious. Like three charts. Okay, that's fine. Nice. What is it? Soul whiff and like ease. Um, just Bitcoin. Just Bitcoin whiff. I have one, two, whiff, three, just different, four, just five, on different dexes. A hundred percent. It's, it's whiff on I different decks. I have eleven charts open. Uh, oh really? Yeah, but I'm sick. Um, it's okay. But it's just like it's not that I open them because when you have all these charts open, they update the price on the top. So like that way you know at all times what the price is. It's almost like a ticker that rolls like at the on your terminal. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have all the charts. Seven of them are Solana meme coins for what it's worth. But anyways, go on, Ovi. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the ETF. Um. We'll see. Like the numbers aren't great, and the outflows are seem to be picking up. Um. It just for now it seems like GBTC like people are selling because the fees are so high so they're rotating to other coins but then there's also the this net amount that keeps getting sold every day so I still think like I'm still worried about that I think there's still concerns to the market I guess I'm less worried than I was yesterday um because maybe it's now priced in and maybe we're getting towards the end of it like yeah the Bloomberg guy said they they thought maybe 25% um of supply reduction of GBTC would be when we start to see things slow down. But he did also say that's something that he would only bet like a sushi lunch over, not like a strong view. Um, and I think we're about 14% down so far. Uh, so I don't know. Like, I do think like, yeah, maybe once you get past a quarter of it, then any additional outflows are really just going to be net neutral flows because they'll just shift towards other ETFs. But it's hard to judge right now. Uh, I'm still I'm still a bit concerned that like that, that picks up and then we can move lower. I think it's not... Um, you know, it's not to be discounted, but you know, maybe maybe a lot of negativity was priced in yesterday, and, and you know, hence we bounced. Yeah, it seems like uh, that's what happens across the board. I mean, Mando, let me go to you here. I know yesterday you were on the other side of the of the bed, of course, and you were long in, which aged probably pretty well. Uh, but question is, are we thinking here more of relief? Is this PTSD speaking on my behalf? Like, because for me, it's rare. So yesterday, two very rare occurrences happened. Occurrence, occurrence, anyways. I'm going to start hosting show in French. Um, so OV went full bearish, and I did not FOMO, which is crazy. Because I'm usually like... <laughs> so, and Mando just... Mando kept us cool. You know, business as usual. <laughs> but yes, it was really like... We, like I was contradicting myself. Ovi's contradicting himself. So it's good, though. It's fine. We're back. But uh, not that I'm FOMOing at all. But what do you think here, Mando? Is this like some fake... Like, I feel like nobody knows anything anymore, but like, could 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 Bitcoin go to thirty five k? Yes, I think it could. I guess my my, my view even yesterday on the show wasn't that I was like super super bullish. I just mm-hmm. felt bullish on Solana at that at that yeah. stage. Like, I felt as though, as we already said a couple of times now, yeah. If I think about ETH right now, and the, the biggest narrative of ETH that people were saying was the ETF, people are now going to be like, well, I'm not. That's not maybe not the most positive thing I've ever seen. Given, yeah, you said Grayscale have got a few billion dollars of ETH that also have to be sold when that starts. So I don't. That's definitely going to make people a little bit more cautious on that. 
And for me, like Solana just keeps hitting all time highs in, in everything that, that it's doing for, for like user metrics. So when I saw that down as that much versus the two main coins and also getting selling off the most in the sell off, I was like, this just feels like a, a good relative buy. Um, it did bounce, but that also meant Bitcoin bounce. I think I think Bitcoin could go could go lower here, but I just yeah I just decided that that was a good time to start buying um, buying that particular coin, okay. um, and I think that's that's still my view. Like uh, I I don't like having big big predictions like um, about where stuff will go over like the next month because invariably we're wrong. But um, but I do think that that if I was to bet on anything, it would be I think Solana outperforms versus everything. Um, out of those top three coins. Yeah, that's kind of what I was alluding to yesterday. I mean, I know I tweeted out that like almost my entire portfolio is on Seoul. And it's, I guess it looked like some people were shocked, but shouldn't be. It's just from a personal like return standpoint. I just think it'll outperform most coins in 2024. And it's a token where I'm comfortable buying while I'm building. Like, <laughs> you know, we do look at charts a lot, but definitely don't have time to tra trade all day. So it's um it's just a comfortable position in my opinion but of course it looks like if i'm looking at the charts here guys prices bitcoin's just slightly above 40 for it's it's the first time since etfs that we don't like giga dump during the show feels good honestly <laughs> i mean I, let's not speak too soon uh you never know what's going to happen over the next you know 40 minutes that will be on 30 minutes that will be on but bitcoin's about 40 ethereum lagging a little behind uh 2238 uh, you have uh, solana's above 86 again um and the rest is kind of all up i mean avalanche seems to be trading in a similar pattern than 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 soul a lot of people are telling me why not avax why not this one it's just like i pick my one winner and i don't have like i don't want to focus on too much but there's a lot of stuff going on there too uh chain links doing well and uh a lot of the coins and if we go to the top gainers and losers here mando they usually share um i think i think the thing about Sui, soul Sui's a massive run um yeah. so he's the they yeah. they a partnership with um Alibaba, um, yesterday they've got they've got like a mixture of a, a Chinese and American dev, um, so like they've definitely got links back there. That's had a that's had a good run. A lot of people looking at Tier again. It's had a very strong bounce again today. That's that's obviously a coin that people liked during the bull. Say, um, which is Beanie's coin, also rallied about ten percent. <laughs> I love how that's now. I love how that's Beanie's become coin. Beanie's coin. <laughs> yeah. I actually bought a bag yes uh, yesterday, but um, I saw you yeah, post that. that. That rallied. It was um, it was some of these these ones that got beaten up again. Like, I, I still think the least hollow pump here is with Solana. Like it, some of the metrics still are breaking, um, the like far exceeding some some uh, other other chains in terms of active addresses transactions stable coin flows all this sort of stuff so I, and maybe that's through the jupiter airdrop but, but that feels like that's going to be a sustained period so at 36 billion versus eth at 240 billion it's still that feels like it's back in range to being a very bullish run to me Look like when it, was, when it was at 50 or 60 yeah i think it got questioned pretty hard and you saw that stuff being like oh solana's you know it's terrible but at this level I look at that and go, yeah, again, this seems like an okay time. And that's that's not me looking at charts. It's just me looking at what I think about the narratives over the next over the next few months. Yeah, it's. No, I think, um, the Go thing on. about the thing about Solana is, and if you think about ETH in like twenty twenty one or twenty twenty, like all of crypto is basically just a massive casino, and I think people seem to do gamble on the same Thank stuff at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> But like you know, like you know, you have NFT season, you have shitcoin season, and you have whatever season. And right now, it just seems like that whole season is happening on Solana for obvious reasons because it's so cheap. Like you can, if you want to like gamble with one dollar, you can't really do it on ETH, but you can do it on Sol. And people have literally made like thousands of dollars from like gambling one dollar or two dollar or whatever it is. Um, but it just seems like that. I don't think that activity is going to leave Solana. And compared to other, um, you know, uh, chains like avalanche or you know even the new stuff like say etc it just doesn't have that same like level of activity and community and like noise on twitter like the you, you always talk about community in nft projects well right. i think like even their own chains have their own communities right and right. solana is like one of, one of the fiercest Metal. out there so i just think like we'll, we will continue to see a lot of gambling and a lot of spending slots at the casino so to speak for the rest of this year and it feels like Sol is the chain to do that on which i think is then bullish for the underlying 
and base token of it, which is which is Sol itself. Um, but it just reminds me of 2021 when it was like ETH was at 1200 and everyone was doing all the stuff in NFTs. I'm like, how is ETH not higher? And then ETH tripled, you know, uh, mm. into the into the rest of the year. And I think you could see this a similar kind of thing on Sol if that activity. He is so up. back. He is so back. Yo, he is so <laughs> back. Like. Did he just say uh, Solana's going to triple? No, no. I, didn't, I didn't say it's, those, are, those are not my words. So did, did, so I, did I insinuate it? Maybe. He's but... so back. He's so back. He's so back. Oh my God, dude. You are so back. You know what's crazy? Let's talk about you, right? Let's talk about you for a second here. You know, you kind of become main character this week on the show, but it's okay. We all have our turns. Um, uh, it was all Nick actually that that from Nifty Portal that quote tweeted you saying that he's stressing out with twenty five hundred dollar uh, position on Wave. Which by the way, Nick, you know, my founder here, I'm tenth holder of Bodogos. I expect better when it comes to you know having a pair um, on. Uh, so this is me calling you out, NFT Nick, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> you know, we need you to swing those nuts a little bigger, uh, a little more when it comes to Wiff and uh, and all these coins, but. Um, Ovi, you exited, um, and I think I think there's a lot of lessons there. That's why I don't want to talk about it just from like the, the amount perspective, yeah. but because a lot of people seem to have thanked you actually under that. That's what I, I I saw for the honesty. So yesterday during your bearishness, when Kapo took over your body, you exited like your entire whiff position. That's what you wrote, and then you bought it right back that same day. Thankfully, like right before the run. So I think you bought it back like even slightly under what you sold for, or a very similar price action. And then you came back into it. Obviously, that aged insanely well because Whiff is up like $100 million in market cap overnight, <laughs> which is wild. When I think it bounced at 200 mil up to like 310-ish, where it probably is at right now. And I thought that was a good post because uh, a lot of people were like, yo, like, you know, respect, you know. But what are like some of the takeaways that you have from your own experience over the last 24 hours? I think, um, you know, for the, for the last two years, I've been so disciplined about like, not selling stuff, DCA, and be like being very, very disciplined. Um, you know, I didn't have a day where like I'd, I'd, I'd set a foot wrong, really. Um, and I put out another tweet about it, which talked about eating all the sugar and chocolate and stuff recently. And I also like from that health standpoint, I was like ultra disciplined for a while. So I think I just like being this like ultra, ultra, ultra disciplined thing for a while. I think yesterday, I don't know what happened. I just had like this moment where like I was like, oh my god, like GBTC, GBTC is going to be really bad. Am I just being like dumb here? And I just you know should I take off more risk and I took profit, you know, as, as you know, I took profits about three or four weeks ago because I just wanted to take some out of crypto that I hadn't sold for about two years. And that was a good decision because I wasn't really selling based on the price or whatever. I was just selling because um, I felt like I wanted to take profits. But here I was just like, you know, I did, there's no need. For, I already took profits two or three weeks ago. I didn't need to take any profits. And um, yeah, sure, like this whole thing, everything was like lower. And I was like panicking because not because things were going lower, but, but reading about all this GBTC stuff. And I was like, you know, if Bitcoin really takes a hit here, all these alts and and meme coins and stuff that are up like five to 10 X over the last few weeks and months could really, really crash. And, um, you know, I just, without really thinking about it, I just like sold the entire thing. And then I think as the day went on, I saw the GBTC numbers and they were bad, but you know, the markets seemed to kind of bounce a little bit and people seemed okay about it. And it wasn't really as much panic. And, you know, you, you I took another step back and I was like, well, look, like, Bitcoin has already dropped like 20 or 30 percent. A lot of alts are, are already 20 or 30 percent lower. And like me selling something that I mean, I'm going to say it's a core position, but like as a meme coin, so just don't take that that seriously. But me selling one, of, selling one of my favorite coins to try and play like a 20 or 30 percent drop it just seems kind of dumb when my our fundamental view for the rest of this year is still like we're going to have all new all time highs this year. So you know, the takeaway is like I think you just have, you just have to like. Get take yourself out of the, you know, out the trenches sometimes. I think I just got like too stuck into it, and um, I bought it back because like I went and played football and I came back home and I just had a clearer head and I was like, you know what, that's just really dumb. Like I've just, I don't. It may go lower from here, but you know, I think I think stuff will do really well for the rest of this year, and um, and and that's what I did. So I think like I don't know, have a few like have a DGen portfolio that you mess around with, but have a few core positions and just hold them for this year. I think is the takeaway i and i always do that like i've never not done that yeah and i just don't know i just fucking slipped or something we all slip something. sometimes don't worry yeah you just have a weird moment where you just do something dumb and i did it but i recognized it as well and i didn't try and like defend what i said yes i didn't try and defend my position as you know i was like it just got straight back in straight back to my normal self um and then yeah 
just pretend like so there's a few lessons in there uh go outside <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> for you it's literally touch grass yeah literally yeah. touch grass so you you played football which the real football mind you y'all so it's for the for people listening the one you put with your feet um and then or you know go play you know hand egg if you want or you can go just go outside you know go go on a tennis court i don't know uh so that's one of the core lessons i'm hearing here and the second one which is like a lot of people says like and it's funny because ironically it's something you guys usually tell me it's like if you're gonna sell don't sell after it's down 20 30 percent if you're gonna buy don't buy the second it's up 20 30 percent right it's like stick to the position and wait a little bit to see what happens next Either you're selling that high into strength, or in, what is you sell into like um, into strength or whatever, into and then you buy it, you know, into into some the weakness or whatever, right? Like you buy on the red day, like yesterday, and then you 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 meant to like you know sell on the opposite when we're feeling a little euphoric and whatnot. Like when I'm taking screenshots or like you know saying some stupid stuff on the timeline, when you guys should be selling, or when Franklin Templeton is like pumping our whiff bag. But you know this is usually signals that you see on the timeline. But I love that you said that, and I love that you made this post because outside of all the jokes about like the bearishness and exhaustion, exorcism and all this stuff, like there's a lesson in here. Like you know, uh, I think Wiz said it best. Like you know, you're you're still top three digital asset trader of all time. I know you joke about this, but you guys' trade on the apes is arguably one of the best ones, and like even the best traders with 10 years of experience, we'll make the same mistake. And if anything, it's proof that like, we don't really know much in the space right now at the moment. I mean, Amanda, what do you think about this? What are some takeaways that you have from Ovi's uh, 24 hour bender? <laughs> I mean, it was a roller coaster of emotions in the group chat. I have to say. Dude, when I, if I, if I, I would, sold that last night and it pumped 50, I would have like, you would have been sick this morning. I'm so upset. I feel like I cheated death. Like that's how I feel. Yeah. You would have been sick this morning. Cause when you bought yeah. back in, honestly, if you look on a chart, it bounced right after that. <laughs> well, that was probably hit by it. But <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> um, what I would say is if it was anyone else but OSF, I'd be like, what the fuck's going on here? But yeah, I do think um, he does do this. This isn't the only time he's done this sort of stuff. Like, uh, he, he's, he's good at, he's like, being a trader does mean you know how to change your mind. OSF changed his mind a lot when I used to trade with him. Um, I think he's turned it down. But I, traditionally, as traders, I was far more like, hold on to the position, hold on to like long term value, like, and I'd always grow it on like bad days. OSF would always be wanting to sell at like a little profit, take it, uh, trade it around way yeah. more than I did. So th this is more like old OSF. Um, I think whiffs a long, long term hold. Like, I, I genuinely think that if Solana goes to does a three X or two X here, like I think whiff whiff could go close to close to a bill so i think it's a good trade that one um and i think uh i think uh, like there's some upcoming stuff like if it gets listed on some of these exchanges but i do think that's a good beta play i think bonk even could have a good run here i think some of those like bigger memes could could come back a little bit more um if solana has an, has another run but this is still a solana trade so you could also yeah. express that in like levered soul you could express that in um spot soul uh, you can express that in even some micro caps you think are a better trade. You can express that on airdrops, ETFs. I just, yeah, there's many ways to, to like, um, the term would be skin this cat, but I, I think that's, is that still, yeah. still PC? Um, I think yeah. And you, to say that in 2024. Yeah, I think so. Um, if if that Bitcoin dev gets what he. Yeah, don't, 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 don't mean it in the way Luke Dasher means skinning a cat. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think I think it was how grim, kind of uh, old OSF but classic OSF. I did, honestly I didn't even know he sold it. I I have not been paying enough attention day to day. But then when he said I bought back the whiff, I was like, when did he fucking sell this thing? That more um, during yeah. his bender, yeah. It's like yeah. he was on a high. You know when you're like the next day of like like on, going on a bender and you're like just not feeling great. Um, it's, it feels like that was that's what happened. I just know. I just think stupid. I just. Had a few days of just doing stupid shit like every day. I, I just don't know why. I love that. That was like the, that was like the peak of like stupid <laughs> peak stupidity. I would say that the moment you stable yourself in certain ways, you feel like you should take more risk. Um, in other yeah. ways, I think that's sometimes mm. very risky in and of itself. Like if you take yeah. down risk, and you're like, oh, I should like buy, and probably the buying of it was the mistake. Because you still liked it, but you just bought it because it was just like it was just trading yeah. um, into a listing, which is always mm. a little bit of like play. Yeah. And then, then you got annoyed about that, and then that's why. But like, I still think it's a good long term trade. But that's yeah. that, that was probably a mistake. Yeah. Okay. 
that uh that makes sense i mean it's true like when you turn to stable you also like you have the itch to just get back in and you tend to like make sometimes the wrong, <laughs> wrong i think i need like a week or two weeks off like screens yeah. like of seeing prices and stuff and then come back and i'll be fine yeah but it's stupid it's coming up so i can't Jupiter, right? it's, it's, <laughs> i agree dude the things you said <laughs> you, man, man. you had me worried honestly i knew you weren't yourself yesterday when you were like even the Jupiter airdrop may not look as bullish if the price keeps going down. And I was like, I've lost my buy. There, like, I, was there like, main coins. I was so worried because like, obviously Mando's like super like Solana bull and stuff. So I, I got him on this, but like Ovi and I are more like the ones like doing, making all the irrational and irresponsible decisions when it comes to meme coins together. Uh, and so, and so when I lost my boy, I was like, damn, I'm out there alone in the Solana trenches. Uh, and I got worried for a second, but he's back. So I'm glad. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. But anyway, so a ton of stuff happening uh, all across the board here. Uh, let's move on to the next topic um, here, which is in Magic Eden. Obviously, like talking about chains, really cross-chain marketplace. Uh, I put a tweet out personally speaking yesterday. Uh, I know we talk about it on the show a lot, but like credit goes with credit to do. Like across chains, like they're dominating right now when it comes to marketplaces. There was a point where like OpenSea was the only one. Then you saw like LooksRare trying to do a vampire attack on it. Worked-ish, but didn't really work work. What was it? XTY to at some point that clearly didn't work at all. Um, and then you had obviously Blur, which is the biggest vampire attack on like NFT marketplaces that we've seen so far. And that, fair to say, it's it's a huge success thus far, right? Like Blur is still killing it in terms of volumes, numbers don't lie, user base, and they have Blast coming up, which it has a huge unlock in the month of February, right? I think it's February was the unlock, and then the airdrop is like April OV or something like that, or May. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, May, I believe, yeah. So unlock, like you get your money back. In, you can you can at least take you it can back put, in, you can, in February, yeah. You can yeah. Do, withdrawals are open in February, and then the airdrop redacted airdrop is in, is yeah. in May. Yeah. That alone, just the fact that you can take your money is huge, right? And so yeah. and so you can be liquid again. So, but then comes Magic Eden, which is like kind of like that third marketplace, which was there but not really there, but they were there, right? I'm not explaining it better than that. And like they kept building, and they're very like ingrained in like culture, right? So chart foo, sheet foo. Like was running all the sheets for Bitcoin ordinals at first, like when it comes to Excel spreadsheets, like the spreadsheet days. So he he like just went all into that. Obviously, they were really quick to on Polygon, but that was like hard, largely just like when Frank moved them to the Utes and stuff. And then like of course like Solana, they've always kind of like dominated alongside Tensor, mind you, like who are also doing a good job on there. So again, like one of the reasons I'm super bullish on Solana is just the ecosystem as a whole has a lot of really cool founders and cool things being built on. But like, anyways, back to Magic Eden. Yesterday they introduced their Magic Eden reward uh, rewards, sorry, um, which is not points. But diamonds. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, at least we're not getting points here. Uh, maybe a different word here. So Magic Eating says, introducing Magic Eating uh, rewards. Uh, we've spent the last year designing a long-term cross-chain NFT rewards program built for everyone. This isn't just another points campaign. It's a meticulously crafted plan to give back to Magic Eden's OGs, collectors, creators, and DGENs alike. Uh, so it seems like they want to, uh, you know, Give back a cross chain. So this could be like a pretty big cross chain reward program. And I don't know what you guys think, or if you've looked more into it, or talked to Magic Eden teams. But um, looks like they're up to something pretty big here um, when it comes to to what they're building. I think yeah, it's great. Eden's... I think um, yeah, I think they understand the space pretty well. And I think they're DGens themselves, right? Like individuals. They're like... DGens themselves. Yeah, they're DGens themselves. I think they understand the space, and I think they understand the perspective from both like a creator side and a collector side and a trader side so everything they're doing is like it's not just like oh we're making this thing for traders or we're making this thing for just creators like it's going to be for for everyone i think but they just get like they get the space and they get how to operate in the space i think so it's you know i haven't really seen seen any like bad commentary about this because it just make kind of makes sense and everything the time like the whole timeline is like Magic Eden three open open sea nil like they're just doing they they're just doing everything that perhaps open sea should have done with that with the massive head start that they had. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it reads here, and I'll go to you here in a minute, Mando. On February second, we'll be giving back to our Solana OGs with a retroactive diamond drop. Oh, that's fire! Because I was buying Solana NFTs in twenty one, but <laughs> to account for historic activity going all the way back to twenty twenty one. And Mando, what do you think here? Um, some pretty impressive work on that front. Of course, we'll see what you know how it rolls out, but. Looks good to me. Um, yeah, look, this is gonna be this is gonna be a very very successful airdrop. Uh, I think I think uh, Magic Eden have got um, got everyone back in in the in their corner uh, for this. 
there seems to be a battle now between them and Tensor. It does feel like points fatigue is starting to to creep in to the market in general. Um, there was that tweet yesterday, which is like how many different points things we've got. I think Iceberg, Iceberg, you put it out, which it was. Uh, so we have three different wallet points, four different NFT trading points, three different NFT points, five restaking point systems, one phone salesman points program, four different lending points, seven different perp dex points, points tracking points program, and 70 L2 points program. What? So we're back into points. Um, but, but you know when yeah. people do points, right? It's because we can't explicitly and legally just say we're going to give out tokens. Yeah. Like, that's all it is, just for people to understand. Like, there's a reason why people do points. Now, we can mark it all around if you want. Call it uh, golden nuggets. <laughs> but, you know, it's also that. But I get it. I like the idea of not having points. This website's nice, man. Um, obviously, they have their Ethereum ecosystem that's launching soon with Yuga and a bunch of NFT projects on the East side. Uh, I saw they announced their ambassador program, which has a lot of friends of ours uh, on there. So Jonah, I saw, of course, Easy. Um, I saw a lot of familiar faces on there. Amy, it's just, there's a lot of people that's very active in like the Solana ecosystem, but also like Twitter Spaces, Eco, and all that stuff. So let's say you're going to get Diamond Quest for buying, listing, collection offers, and whatnot. Look, I think what would be cool here is we'll reach out to one of their founders and just get them on the show and just talk about all this because uh, it's really cool stuff. If we're with, we don't even have a partnership in place with them. It's just like, I think what they're doing is great. Um, and they're killing it. So that was some big news actually coming out yesterday, uh, on the NFT side. And while we're still on NFTs, lads, um, you know, let's pull up the DGEN's finance dashboard here across marketplace. So another hoodie sale at 205 ETH, uh, yesterday, that's Kevin, who's, uh, usually listening to the show. He was just there actually, Kevin Wu, uh, so was Ape, uh, not as Ape, sorry, his, uh, hoodie punk for 205 ETH. Uh, and a couple nice blonde sales. I saw one of one who paid like what they bought Ryan Zero's group, or they paid 25 mil for Beeple, uh, Beeple's piece. They also bought a Andy Warhol esque uh, punk, which is uh, about Marilyn Monroe. Um, and then, um, and then it seems like the volumes are still, you know, pretty doing pretty good in that front uh, across across chains. Um, nothing really on change in terms of floor prices, but oh wait, punks are really rallying up nonstop, huh? And eat. Yeah, just keep going. Uh, Sixty. Oh. They kind of. They've kind of been there since, for a couple of days, though, dude. Hey, in dollars, yeah, dude. But like a week ago, it was like fifty-two. Like when you think about ETH value. I, I just mean a couple of days. I didn't mean yeah. the, the, that. Oh, that yeah, yeah. happened a couple of days ago. It, it happened over the weekend on some of the big sweeps. It didn't happen. It didn't happen yesterday, for example. Yeah. Um. So it looks like. Uh. I mean, it's crazy for. for for a collection this size to move in ETH price so much like that, at that not size, sorry, it's 10K, like a lot, of, but like, you know what I mean? Like price wise, like it's a big move, market cap wise. <laughs> it's pretty crazy yeah. when it moves 10 ETH floor uh, up like that. Love to see that, right? It's uh, it's something that personally I really enjoy. So floor is at $142,000 now, but that's because ETH is not moving. It's true. You're right. It was 160K ish. So um, that's moving uh, on up. And then besides that, uh, it's really on ordinals, guys. Like this airdrop that took place. Maybe I need to bring someone I want to talk. Is Lenster in the audience? Uh, selfishly, if Lenster's here, you can request to speak. It's Lenster that wrote about this. But like, it's number one volume wise on on DJ. Two like, grand. You got two grand now. Dude, in, your, in your wallet for that, that airdrop. That's. That beats most airdrops that people I'm get. I'm not an insanely active, like, ordinals. Like, buy. I, all I did was buy eight puppets. Like, a few weeks ago. So, I guess it's recently active. I don't know if they cal calculated based on volumes and stuff. Like, I know some people that have one puppet didn't get any. But I don't know if it's based on how much you buy or how active you are. But, like, you can see. Like, it's on my – it's public wallet. But You're just in a snapshot of when it was. Maybe. But it's crazy, guys. It's 0.05 Bitcoin. Yeah, like, it's not a small airdrop. We're talking about two thousand dollar airdrop uh, to people for just being there, and then you have to activate it. So what I did, I've I transferred it to myself. So on my Xverse wallet, I went and I transferred the NFT back to myself, and I think that activates it. But if someone knows better than me in the audience, you're welcome to correct me or just come on stage and like and like tell us. But very interesting what's happening on that front. Um, at point oh five ETH, uh, there's only twenty one thousand of them, and you're gonna be airdropped token like someone like some people have been doing some insane math on that obviously but what i'm most excited about is not really like what happens with this specific rsic airdrop is 
are we in for the meta of airdrops now moving on to ordinals that is specific to projects? Because not only that, this project actually also like pumped the puppet floor because it was tied to them. So like a lot of people like sold it to buy another one of the of these NFTs, right? So similarly, like you get an airdrop from Yuga, you like keep it in the Yuga family and like spend it on that. So like it seems like there's something similar happening on that front uh, on um, on Ordinal. So maybe if someone knows better than me, definitely welcome to DM me or just like request to speak and just come talk about it for a minute. But I find that interesting. Um, and yeah, I mean, Node Monkeys are still hovering around the same price that they've been for a minute. Uh, same for the puppets and the Bitcoin Trumps launch. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, yesterday they started indexing them, uh, so that's up and running. Uh, it's it's up 100. <laughs> percent uh, We yes, I I you you heard me right. I said the Bitcoin trumps. <laughs> so so that uh, that launched and is uh and is happening right now uh, on Magic Eden. You can find me. <laughs> I get these things. Oh, are you guys buyers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this Bitcoin Trumps. It's killing me, man. It's killing me. Um, it's just Donald Trump with different um, traits in the pixel eyes. I don't know how long this is. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Look at this guy right there. That's a, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a Bitcoin Trump if I've ever seen one. USA suit. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, this one is so good. <laughs> but it's not funny. I have none of these, but it's hilarious. And it's probably gonna same thing that happened. The card's probably gonna happen in this collection. So we're gonna go up and then probably gonna go down and he's gonna announce like a fourth collection. Hey, how many collections is Donald Trump at? Four? Is that Three? his fourth? I don't know. I have no idea. There was a Trump cards, then an airdrop. Like more trump cards. I, I think this it's is third one. This is third one. Third? Yeah. Okay. I mean just awaiting Trump to move on to another chain next and just to drop on like Arbitrum or something. I don't know. Or Polygon for what it's worth, or any of the other L2s. Uh that's definitely gonna happen at some point or another. But look, Donald Trump is more active than most of the people right now in our space on Bitcoin. So I don't know what that means, but I think people need to like pay more attention to what's happening over there. Uh, for sure, for sure. Anyways, uh, in other news, it was also um, on the NFT side, um, it was the Starry Night. I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, the obviously 3AC, when they went on through liquidation, they had a lot of punks, they had a lot of uh, the Ringer that sold for $6 million at sold the base and whatnot. But they also have another, um, another sale that's underway for a lot of one-on-ones. Now, the one of one art market has not been doing as well as a lot of the rest of the market, but that's like that's normal. It's just like art market, you know. It's like it applies to certain buyers, not necessarily like DGens that want to buy them. But there's a lot of grails. Uh, I don't know, Ovi. Did you did you see that sale that Sotheby's is running? Yeah, it's pretty. It's amazing. Like I saw um, some pretty pretty good sales from it. Um, it's that's you know it's really it's really it's great to see some like you know, we talked a lot about like. Um, they're not being um, interesting art and stuff um, uh, out there moving hands, but you know this is uh, this is definitely a big one, an interesting one. There's some, some real grails and stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, Starry Night grails. There's a Grant Union one of one. Um, when does this end? Six days. So that'll get interesting. So don't mind the prices now, because like you saw with the ordinals, it was just like the same day. You have the Grant Union bedtime, which is really cool. You haven't. That's an ex copy one on one guy is going for sale. That would be interesting yeah. to see where that goes. ACK this there time well. piece, yeah, this time piece I remember. So that's like actually a people in time one of one. Um, I remember hosting Keith. I think I met Keith because of that, or one of those things. It's not Clubhouse. So that's that's way back. I remember them buying that. There's an ACK. This other world piece is crazy. You other world is a fire artist, huh? Like his work is crazy. He's insane. Yeah. His stuff is very cool. Insane. Insane. He's killing it. So there's that. There's a squiggle for sale there. There's a Dimitri Cherniak um, piece, which is not a ringer, actually. Uh, iterations. Tyler Hobbs is an incomplete control for sale. Multiple squiggles. Sailor Moon here. Uh, another X copy. Huh. So is that this is a one of one, too, right? This one, wow. This one is the most biz right now. The Grifter for sale on there. Rest in peace. A lot of money piece for selling there. Hecatel, Osinachi. C I mean, this is like an incredible collection. I would say it was created by VVD though, which is like arguably one of the best curators in the space. 
you ask me. Um, so Dan Jews and Terrell Jones. So a lot of interesting pieces. If you're an art collector here, um, it's going to be interesting to see that. And I'm really curious to see how this goes because obviously like the art market was slower in this time, but it's always like that. And uh, it's kind of normal. Uh, and then last but not least, and let's go to our giveaway. So make sure you're retweeting the post at the top of our spaces. We've all shared it to kick off a partnership with Robit. We are giving away $15,000. $1,000 a day for 15 days, business days, mind you. So that's, uh, that's, um, you know, business is successful when we host on business day. So we'll be picking someone from Twitter spaces, uh, live on a Twitter picker. And if you're on here, I will, you'll have to make a real bit account which is super fast. You don't even have to use your email, you can use your MetaMask account, and then you will be able to get credited a thousand dollars and have fun with that, uh, or just take it out and pay your stuff. So anyways, the last thing, which Sims added that, uh, into our stuff, which I have no idea for this, but hold on. Doom on Doge. So obviously there's been a lot of stuff happening on Doge. I think they call them Dogenals there. Uh, I haven't been paying super attention, but I just see it, right? It's hard to, it's hard to ignore because a lot of them are in my, a lot of them in my comments uh, on a daily basis. But it seems like there is a game that you can play on Doge. Uh, where's Jonah when you need him? Uh, usually he's listening to the show as well. So the Doge, these for Dogenos, Dogecoin Dogenos, these for Doom and Doge, now inscribed on those blockchain, blockchain forever. Play it on chain. Um, so it looks like we can play a game now on Dogecoin. You guys, uh, let me see. I want, I, I kind of want to see how this, this works out. Um, or click on the content link for full screen with mouse support. This game is redefining gaming, just as Dogenos are reshaping the blockchain landscape. So, it looks like we'll be able to play games on Doge, guys. Are you guys going to inscribe uh, NFTs on Doge and play video games on Doge or what? I think this is the Ordinals thing. Like uh, you could, with Ordinals, because Dogecoin is essentially a, a fork of Bitcoin. Right. Yeah, it's a fork of Litecoin, which is a fork of Bitcoin. Um, the same technology works. So you can start you can start creating like basic games and put it on the put it on the chain. So I've seen Doom actually gone on to like other chains before. So like I think somebody it's a quite an easy game to like put onto some of these. But yeah, I saw this. I think I I saw actually the Quantum Cats have like got a form of Street Fighter as well. I don't know if you've yeah, seen. Yeah, I saw that they launched a Street Fighter game. <laughs> like they are we're getting some OG games coming onto Bitcoin. Um, yeah, and and Dogecoin obviously. Okay, well look, uh, looks like you can now play video games on Doge. So much for Web three gaming. Uh, there's a lot going on there and you absolutely love to see that. So if you're curious, uh, what's happened, there's so much going on across all chains. You love to see some anyways, boys, lads, why don't you say this is the perfect time to pick a winner? I mean, Mando, you are the expert resident expert in robot giveaways. Now, given that you've been doing this with rec radio for like a year and a half, <laughs> how do you guys usually run this? We, we just got a Twitter picker. I thought okay. that was clear. I so think I same, same as okay. same as was uh or oh, you you want to do it i can run it i can run it so yeah. i'll run a twitter picker here and i i do it of the last seconds guys while i find the tweet to go so i go here here so i go right there on my account this is the this is a tweet right fomo hour make sure you follow at fomo hour here you go this is the one and this is the post that is pinned at the top so i copy this one into the twitter picker and we verify oh sorry about that so it's here we load the tweet and now we pick one winner and they have to follow at FOMO hour. Oops. Whoa. Sorry, guys. And then it's, it's Robit.com, right? That's their username like this? Yeah. I just want to be sure. Dude, that's one day. Like, did, did, did the Robit founders ever do any AMAs? Mm -hmm. Have we ever heard them on an AMA? I don't think mean so. to call them out. I'm just saying we'll be fired to have one of them one day. I mean, that is a crazy business when you think about it. Yeah, why don't you talk to them? <laughs> I'm sure to talk to them. Um, so wait, must have a profile picture, a description, and a banner, right? So we make sure it's not a fake. Like no location, which is fine because I don't yeah. have a location. Tweet um, count. So hundred tweets. Seems like hundred tweets. Like, we're gonna get a lot of bots here. So let's 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 make this high. Let's make sure it's a community member. Okay, so let's do more than hundred fuck me. Sorry, guys. What did you do that? I, 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 I went back. What's happening now? Dude, there's so many. What are all these? I'm getting attacked by ads. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah. You, um, by tomorrow we'll get this. Uh, this Whoa. easier if 
<laughs> in the background. Oh. What is happening? Did you guys see those? Did anyone see those ads? <laughs> no, hold on. Look at this. No, look at this. Look at my screen. Where's my ad blocker? Oh, I don't have the ad blocker on the new computer. I forgot. Shit. My bad, y'all. Hold on. Oh my god. This is I'm you're old. nailing this. This has been a really good first one. Okay. No, it's because I forgot to redownload my ad blocker on my new laptop. So now I'm getting like hammered by ads left and right. Okay, so Pick must one. follow FOMO hour. Must yeah. follow Robitcom. There you go. Oh my God. If anyone's seeing the screen right now, what a mess. And then must have a banner, a description, and let's do over 500 tweets, Mandel. I think 100 is probably fine. 100 is fine. Okay. And then one month, one month, one month, continue. And the winner, there is 200, 243 entries loaded. Just so people Miracle know. in the Water is the winner. No, no, no. We, it's not a winner yet. Hold on. You have to, uh, yeah. All right, and the winner is, oh, that is a community member. And I love to see that. Opportunist.eth. Opportunist.eth. You are the winner of today's $1,000 giveaway on robot so make they sure come up on stage there right are we, yeah, are we having is he here? On he's for sure here if not we'll have to run it again i mean this is like i'm talking about someone who i think does not miss a single show of ours like i i can recognize the name and the pfp uh because he's got a cvl pfp uh as well so opportunist is the winner uh of today's giveaway and i know he oh he's here i see him he's right there awesome I just don't know if they'll come up on stage, but request yeah, is no, as long as they're in the in the audience, I think that's that's good enough. Yeah, but just for proof, just for proof's sake that he's yeah. right, so to speak, he's right there. Uh, he's on the stage um, over here. Oh, Ovi, we have a meeting in four minutes. Was that the meeting is scheduled to like get we you out of do you have... yeah. <laughs> What's up? Hey, I'm here. GM. Hey, everyone. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations on being our very first thousand dollar winner. Yeah, I, that feels amazing. I'm not gonna lie, that I feel amazing right now. I love that. <laughs> you, you do listen to the show every day. He did come to our Toronto event, so I know exactly who we're talking about. Someone's very active in the rugby Discord as well. So congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, I do have a roll bit account and I do play there sometimes. Sometimes I leverage one dollar. <laughs> Times. All right. You can leverage a dollar a thousand times. So please reach out to Bernie, Burn Dogler, or Burn Dogler will reach out to you. Be careful, it won't be a fake. We'll make sure that uh, Burn Dogler handles that. Reaches out to you, gets your robot account, and that we credit you hopefully in the next uh, in the next day or so. So thank you very much, opportunity for being an avid listener. We appreciate you. Really appreciate that, guys. Love Rug Radio. Hell Cheers. yeah! Hell Thanks. yeah! Hell yeah! What a better way to start this than with some with a dope community member, like you were saying, Mando. So just a reminder, every single day, make sure you follow at FOMO Hour and at Robitcom. We're going to be giving away $1,000 a day for 15 shows. And then every Tuesday and Friday, so starting next Tuesday, you can win even more money because we're going to be running dual arenas, loot boxes. Last I checked, there's been some insane wins on Wrecked Radio. And I've, I'm honestly, I'm not going to lie, I've been wanting this deal on this show forever because like, I love it when you get to loot boxes and I see someone win like a fucking mutant ape or a golden pudgy. Like that shit was crazy on the timeline and the content is fire. So it always makes a great giveaway. So congratulations. Make sure you follow us. And with that, with that, with that, we'll see y'all tomorrow morning, 10 30 AM Eastern standard time, 7 30 AM Pacific standard time for the episode of FOMO hour on rug radio. Let's go. <laughs>